I rented out a Tesla for three days with Hertz and there's a lot to get into. I'll let you know what changed and what it's like taking the Tesla out for the first time. I rented a Tesla Model 3 from Hertz on my vacation in Arizona. I've never driven a Tesla and wasn't sure about the process. How is it using the key card? Does Google Maps even work? How am I going to charge it? And can I use the Tesla app? We arrived Sunday afternoon after a short three hour flight and left Wednesday morning. I spent a total of $291, including taxes and a discount. Otherwise, it would have been $383. We got off on the wrong foot right out of the gate. We got on the tram, which took about five to 10 minutes, and we got in line for Hertz. When we were in the back of the line, there were three employees working at the desks. By the time we got to the front of the line, there was just one employee. And the line grew to twice the size, with about 20 groups waiting probably. Once we got to the counter, we thought it'd be smooth sailing, but unfortunately, our code wasn't being registered. I have no idea why. He eventually succumbed to giving us his code, which was a few bucks more than our original offer. It was fine with us. We were happy to just get our car and head on out after a 45 minute wait. With that, he gave us the ticket and we went downstairs to the parking lot. Our car wasn't in the parking space. It was kind of in the middle of the road. We didn't get much footage and booked it right on out of there. The car was clean upon pickup. We got one with a red paint finish, which is interesting because it's an extra 2K to buy, but it looks really nice. Driving it for the first time was really difficult for me. The way the signals worked were different. The gas pedal and braking was also very different due to regenerative braking. Okay, ready? It's still something to get used to for sure. Stopping is difficult because it just stops. You don't actually have to brake. It's like a little game. Can you make it a smooth stop? Maybe these roads are just bumpy. They look really nice and new and they are. The ride quality didn't feel smooth compared to other sedans. I've definitely seen some Teslas and judged them for driving differently before. I now understand where they were coming from. I'll definitely be giving drivers more grace in the future. I also felt more exposed than I expected. I felt like I was in a fishbowl due to the panoramic glass roof. I thought you could black it out, but you can't, so it does get hot in the Arizona sun. I mean, if it were the summer, you could probably crack an egg on that dashboard and let it cook. One of the other things is it's pretty echoey in here. I wasn't expecting that. I guess it makes sense with all the glass, and it feels like you're in a spaceship a little bit more than I thought it would feel like. Well, tell me when it goes green, but I'm so used to being like, no, 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 I need to look and see if it's going to go green. But it'll tell me, it'll do a little ding. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, see, it dinged. I thought the coolest part was going to be that you can actually see things come up on the screen. Like, we can see if the biker comes up, there is a, oh, oh, there he is. It is pretty close to us, though. I never really look at this either, because I'm just looking straight ahead. <laughs> so... I don't know. I guess that's cool. I guess I don't get the point of it as much as I thought I would. Bring our indicator on. I feel like practically a new driver. And we're here for our coffee, so we're gonna put it in park. And then once I unbuckle my seatbelt, it's like magic. Easy access. One of the craziest things is that you don't actually stop the car. You don't actually turn off your engine. Make sure it's in park. And you just leave and every single time I'm like, I'm doing something wrong. And it's fine every single time. You can see from the outside that it's locked, but it's very nerve wracking when I'm not used to this. Let's get into using the key card. It came in a plastic sheath and the car was easy to lock and unlock. From what I've seen from other review videos, the Tesla app didn't work for them, even if they were a Tesla owner and had an account. For me though, I was able to create an account on the app and use it very easily. Maybe it's a new addition. Either way, I made it so I just had to carry the key as a backup. So I've mainly used my phone. It was really nice to be able to check the temperature of the car, be able to cool it down before getting in. One thing was that we thought we could get away with charging the car at the Airbnb, but outside the outlet was just out of reach. We needed an extension cable and it just was not worth the hassle. They do provide a wall charger though, which is nice. 
We went to a Tesla charging station and the experience was really easy. And we're just gonna navigate to a charging place. Looks like we have a supercharger nearby, but this one is the cheapest. It's way slower than the other ones, but we are at 76%. So mm -hmm. there's 11 available, that's mm -hmm. amazing. We'll go there. Oh my God, it is bumpy. But we went to the other charging area and decided against it because it was in a garage and there are so many people waiting there. It's gonna take a lot more time. There is a weird noise coming from the car and I thought maybe it's preparing to charge. Maybe it's the AC working extra hard, but the noise is not going away and I don't know what it's from. Next time navigate to supercharger battery will precondition for faster charging. Oh, that's what it was doing. Well, that's good to know. We parked, started charging and waited in the car. This was important to do before dropping off the rental because you'll get charged an extra $35 fee if it's not back with 80%. It's charging at 275 miles an hour with 30 minutes remaining on a 74% battery. Hertz will bill you for the electricity usage later on, so that is something to be aware of. It went from 74% to 100% in 25 minutes for a total of $5.42. What I liked most about the car was how fast it was. It was really easy to take turns and maneuver around. Some features weren't available due to it being a rental. One example of that is sentry mode. The car doesn't store dash cam footage, which is good for renters. It also doesn't have full self-driving. I think that's an added cost of about 20K. So it just has lane assist and smart cruise control. Auto steer? You double pull it, it turns on. It will be set to the speed limit and you can off, you can increase it. Oh so wow. So even though you're going 60, it'll try to go 65 if the speed limit was 65. That's crazy. We're just sitting here waiting for it to charge. And we were wondering if we could play karaoke or some arcade games. And it turns out Hertz does not pay for the premium subscription, so you can't really do any of that stuff. They do have LTE data, so you're set there. They have Google Maps, obviously, otherwise you'd be screwed. They don't pay for the premium subscription, so you can't get that premium experience of playing games. We caved, so we're doing a hotspot in order to watch something while we're waiting, even though it's already at 96%, which is incredible. Unfortunately, there's no Spotify either, which is a huge downside. I love having Android Auto or even Apple CarPlay because then you get your Spotify, but here you don't have it. Another thing is that they do have Google Maps, but Google Maps in their own type of way and a Tesla way. For some reason, they don't tell you if it's a stoplight or a green light coming up or if it's an intersection with any of those things. And that's really how I actually navigate. So it was different, but the screen was very easy to use. I would say the only thing that I didn't like was that the passenger can not just do something if the driver is doing something on the screen. Only one of you can do one thing. If the driver is getting instructions, you can't change the airflow or the temperature at the same time. That's one thing that I really didn't like. Another thing is that I have a car that has a heads up display and I really enjoy it. I think even a regular odometer is really nice to have to know what your speed is. You just have to look down very quickly. But with the Tesla, you have to go and look at the screen, which you're less likely to do. And I think it's even more important to know when you're in a Tesla how fast you're going because the pickup is so fast. If I were on vacation where I was driving a lot, I wouldn't do this because I'd have to wait for charging and that would take time away from exploring. Unlike the check-in process, the checkout process was very straightforward and fast. Taking out a different car made the trip more exciting for sure.